Good afternoon, Kathy. How are you? Good afternoon, Chris. I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day here in New England, like 50 degrees, sunny. Oh. And it's February 10th when we're doing this uh, interview. So that's unusual, but I'll take it. Yeah. So we have an esteemed guest with us today that yes. we started wooing her about two years ago when we started the Petability Podcast, and it's finally come to fruition. So our guest today is Ilaria Borghese, and she has been instrumental uh, as a player in pet rehabilitation. She's been there from the beginning. When I and you, you were part of the first graduating class at the University yes. of Tennessee. I was class yes. number three, and Eladia was there. Yes. Right? Yes. So uh, I'm just really, really excited to, to have her, and she's always been in my corner um, that whole time from the beginning. Um, I first met Eladia through a, um, she had a workshop that she did in the Minneapolis, Minnesota area. And uh, it was a splinting orthotic workshop, and I loved what she presented. That was with her company, Therapaw, which she founded in 2001. And uh, since then, she has become a, a national and international lecturer, and uh, her, her products have been um, wonderful in my practice as far as supporting the animals that, that I've needed splinting for. Absolutely. Um, and, and I, I just, I, I want to just reiterate it again that, um, that Therapaw and Eladia have been there since the very beginning. So I graduated from the University of Tennessee in 2003 and Therapaw had already made their name. Like they were already a, a, a force in, in the industry. So it's great to have them behind us and, um, be in our corner. That's right. But more than that. She, she never, it's like, what's that phrase? Like no moss uh, grows on a, on a rolling stone. So Eladia has had the uncanny ability to kind of forecast the future and see what we rehabilitationists need before we even know we need it. And certainly right. before the pet parents know that we need it. So what came along next that I took advantage of was the STAR conference. Yes. So I attended three of those conferences. STAR stands for the Symposium on Therapeutic Advances in Animal Rehabilitation. So what was unique about that was this, we've talked in, in other shows about how uh, when we got in the door, Kathy, it was a new phenomenon, right? The right. canine right. rehabilitation, physical rehabilitation, physical therapy for small animals. It didn't exist in a formalized way, and and we right. got in very early. So a lot of the the classes and um, things that were offered to us were were basic. And then mm -hmm. after a few years, you know, we because we'd been on that from ground floor from the beginning, you know, we were rising up in that elevator, and we needed more information, more education. Uh, we needed to grow. So Eladia through the Star Conference brought in experts from around the country, around the world to educate us and continue to, um, you know, kind of, I guess, press us to become better clinicians. Right. And what an opportunity for us to all collaborate together because people came from all over for the STAR Conference. There were people from all over the globe um, Absolutely. and we were able to meet them and, um, you know, share cases with them and pick their brains and stuff. And that was the first of its kind. We didn't have that. We couldn't meet we didn't have a group to meet. So these star conferences were really key for us. Yep. I agree. And what's that, you know, what stays in, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So <laughs> I'm just going to throw in here what happens at the star conference stays at the star conference. Oh boy. And those spreads. Yeah. It was always a good time. Food. I know. <laughs> Food, drink. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. And still is awesome. They're still ongoing. Uh, so other, other things, uh, Eladia is also on the board of directors for Veterinarians International. And the reason that, that she's here today is she has uh, founded and is CEO of a new, I'm going to call it a platform. It's more than a website. I mean, it's huge. It's a platform for rehabilitation professionals, pet parents, and anybody that really wants resources related to such topics. Um, and it's called Vital Vet. And so we have invited Eladia here today to share 
what vital vet is and uh hopefully you guys out there in our audience will be able to to take advantage of this wonderful wonderful resource really it, it's a fantastic resource i've been looking on their website for days it's just it, <laughs> and it's, you can for days there's a lot on I can't, it, yeah well here's the thing it must have been such an undertaking to be able to pull all of those resources together and there are some top names um, mm -hmm. for their education, for their online courses, uh, for their consultations, you know, some very top name people in the rehabilitation community. So it's, it's, it's excellent. It's really exciting. It absolutely is. So at this point, I would like to formally introduce my mentor. Hopefully I can call her my friend, Eladia <laughs> Borghese. Welcome. Thank you both. Thank you, Chris and Kathy so much for having me. And I actually applaud you both. Specifically, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I love the title of your podcast because we are talking about pedability, um, meaning that if we can change the environment, if we can change uh, a, a, a support system or a type of assisted device, then we, then we render a disabled pet able. So for example, if you have a pet who's not able to get up the stairs and all of a sudden, and so you would call that a disabled pet. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, if you introduce a ramp and then, the, and then the dog can get up the ramp just fine and into the home, then all of a sudden you go from a disabled pet to a, an able-bodied pet. Right. And, and I really applaud that. And that's what, that's what Vital Vet is all about, to help pets become more able-bodied, more mobile, uh, uh, more, uh, you know, to improve their quality of life. And honestly, if you can make your pet more independent, it certainly reduces all the stress on you. It, it reduces right. the stress on your back. It reduces your, you know, that, that, that constant weight that's on you when your pet is not doing well, when your dog's not doing well and has a hard time getting around and you're not quite sure what to do. So um, all of that is sort of, you know, that weight is lifted when you make your pet more comfortable, more able-bodied, more functional, more mobile. And that's what Vital Vet is all about. And that's, I feel what your podcast is all about too. And I, that's why I love your title so much. It's, it's about mobility and independence. And I've said this hundreds of times before that, that having so having a therapause device or having physical therapy or having some type of wheelchair gives these dogs not only independence, but choices, right? And that's, that's a quality of life issue. It gives the dog or cat the opportunity to move away from something it seems deems unpleasant, sunbathe, go get a drink, go get a water, join their family, join their pack on a walk. And those are all really important quality of life issues. Yeah, agreed, agreed completely. So, so that's what Vital Vet is all about. So, um, you know, can I can I start with Vital Vet because I'm no, always please do. Right? Yes, please do. <laughs> so, Vital Vet is a platform that um, my uh, my um, partner Maria Denzer and I started in um, 2020. So we're we're brand new out there. It's just you know it's in its infancy right now. But the reason why we started it is because we were, through our other businesses, we were getting a lot of questions about like, you know, uh, my dog has uh, an injury to his knee, my dog needs a back brace. And these are devices that um, our, you know, our other company, Therapod, did not supply, but we were always recommending these other companies. Um, and as Chris had mentioned, you know, uh, we have been in this industry, in the rehab industry since its infancy, you know, for over 20 years now. Mm -hmm. So we know the products that are out there. We know what's really helpful. We know what's, what's, what's working and what isn't. And um, Vital Vet is a compilation of 20 years of work, all put under one umbrella. So it's like, you know, where, where you have Chewy or Petco or PetSmart, where you have all of those websites as being sort of general products websites where they, where they offer leashes or collars or pet food, VitalVet is the pet specialty site 
where it offers choices with harnesses and braces and wheelchairs, any kind of mobility aids, um, anything to help uh, with at home uh, mobility, you know, which, which I think is really important because when you're at a veterinarian's office, you know, the veterinarian sees your pet right there and they help your dog for that particular time, but they have no idea that you may live in a three-story walk-up. And how right. are you going to get your pet up to your apartment? Right. Or they have no idea what kind of resources you have, um, or they have no idea that you have um, a slippery floor and your dog just came out of surgery and may be slipping on the floor and may re-injure himself. So at-home safety and help is critical to um, pet parents. And that's why it's one of the main features on Vital Vet as well. So um, we really uh, have taken our 20 years of experience. We've, we, know, we know all the products that are out there, whether they're on Amazon or whether they're tiny little mom and pop shops that have built a little product because it helped their pet. And we've compiled them all on Vital Vet. Now, one thing that I do have to say to your audience is that the products that we've assembled on Vital Vet are not necessarily for sale on Vital Vet. The point of Vital Vet is it's a resource guide for pet parents as well as for uh, veterinarians and rehab professionals so that they can find everything under one umbrella and then they can look, let's say, if they're looking for a brace for a wrist injury, the dog has uh, uh, arthritis in their wrist or they have jumped off a high surface and they've developed um, a hyperextension injury where they've, where they've uh, stretched out some ligaments or tendons. So then what you do is you go on Vital Vet and you see the top braces that are out there, whether you want something that's a light support, whether you want something that's a more of a moderate support, or whether you need something if your dog, you know, had uh, sustained an injury, you know, yesterday and you need something that's going to immobilize the dog for a little bit until so that they have time to heal everything is available on vital vet for you to look at and then from there it'll give you buttons where you can actually go to the website once you've decided on the product you haven't so, missed anything either i went through that list the other day looking at uh, harnesses for dogs with amputations front limb back limb uh, traction booties um, you've covered it all um, and you left no stone unturned with that. And what a great resource to just go to one place to find all of that stuff. And I don't even have, I don't have to do any of the, um, the, I don't have to do all the background research. I know that it's a good product because it's on Vital Vet and it's being recommended by Vital Vet. And I think it's, I think it's a wonderful resource for uh, professionals as well, because when, when, you know, I'm trying to save time for veterinarians and rehab therapists, they can go on Vital Vet and they can talk to their clients and say, okay, you know, let's look at the braces that are available. What's your price range? These are the ones that I'm recommending. And, you know, prices is, is, is a critical factor for a lot. It can of be, yeah. So, so having choices that are available out there, these are the ones I recommend. These are probably the ones that are going to last longest, but maybe we can start with a you know, uh, middle of the road price range brace and see how your dog tolerates it. Mm -hmm. And then if you like it, maybe we can go with something that's a little heartier and, you know, might be a little bit more expensive, but if your dog needs it for the long term, it may be worth it for you. Right. So everything is there for the professional to save time and just go and run with these and say, you know, and, and talk to their clients and say, these are the choices that are available. Let's talk about it together and let's see what you think would be best for your dog. So for right. example, let's say, a, a, you know, a custom made orthotic may be best for a dog's specific injury, but the dog happens to be a six month old puppy. And so you know that dog is gonna end up growing a little bit. And you also know that that dog being a puppy is pretty much going to be fairly active and it's probably going to chew on everything. So you probably don't want to invest $1,500 in an orthotic. You may want to do a softer brace that's a little bit less expensive and deal with that. And then, and, you know, try to contain your puppy as much as we all try to contain puppies, which is 
very little, <laughs> which is um, not that easy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, and then move on, you know, at a later date with something that's a little hardier if your, if your dog can, can tolerate it. So all of the choices are there. Um, you know, we run the gamut. We try to provide the pet parents and the professional with the choices that they need in order to make the best decision for that specific animal and for the pet parent themselves. I, I'm kind of embarrassed to say, I remember when you launched it and, you know, we got the, the emails and, you know, I looked at it and, um, and then I get your blogs and I read, you know, the articles and things like that. But until I was preparing for our little chat today, I hadn't really done a deep dive and it's grown so much over the last two years, I think and <laughs> I was, I guess, overwhelmed impressed, um, just, I mean, overwhelmed in a good way. Right. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm, you're, you're working on a splint for a, a dog right now that, that is a patient of mine. And, um, I was scrambling at their house visit one and I didn't even think to go to vital vet. And I wish I could do that over and, you know, give them some resources until his custom splint was made and, and so on sure. and so forth. Um, we made, may do, but it wasn't easy. You know, we're on our phones, the owners of me, and we're trying to find, and they're like, would this work without, you know, and I'm like, uh, you know, and as I was doing my deep dive, I came across a um, wearable warm pack for the shoulder for a dog. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think, I don't want to speak for Kathy, but as an older practitioner, you know, I've kind of gotten stuck in my ruts, you know, my, my products that, that I've been my go-tos over the years and so forth. And I have not had the time to keep up with all the, the latest and greatest, you know, the new things out there. And, um, so when I saw that, I'm like, this is going to be perfect for Juno. So I sent the link right over to the owner. She replied, this is awesome. Now, I'd also sent her a home plan and some other things earlier that day. Didn't get a response to that. But I got a response to the shoulder warm pack. And she's like, this is going to be so great for her and me. Now, this is a <laughs> retired um, Australian shepherd that um, has some pretty severe, you know, shoulder arthritis. And it's, and it's pretty... It's much worse on one side. And I know this dog's personality is such that it doesn't want to lay there and have, you know, the owner sit with it and put on a warm pack. So this is perfect that it's this wearable option. So to that point, again, just you can find anything and everything that you may want on VitalVet. Chris, the mm -hmm. thing that blew me away because I work with a lot of exotic animals, so I don't just see dogs and cats, but I see a lot of um, birds, so particularly parrots, ducks, geese, chickens, um, because I've been working in avian medicine for about 30 years now. And when I saw those little shoes that they made for the duck, I was out of my mind. I couldn't, I couldn't look at anything else. <laughs> I couldn't look at anything else. And I wish, I wish, I wish I had known that for, for patients, but now I know going forward, you know, we can make some duck shoes. <laughs> well, you, you actually brought up several good points there, Kathy. Um, first off, Chris, there's nothing to be embarrassed about because as Maria here mentioned, um, our, our, you know, Vital Vet Therapol, our sites are not, you know, our products are not sexy. It's not, it's not like, you know, the hot trendy thing that people look at. People find us when they need us, you know, mm. when, they, when they have a an animal in need or they have a patient in need. And so it's not something that is, um, you know, that, that's, that's flashy and bright and vibrant and something that they can remember that easily. But, but I tell you right now, if you remember VitalVet, if you remember one thing, remember VitalVet, that'll make your life a lot easier. It, it, the choices are all there so that you can peruse through everything that's available. And, um, and it'll, it'll, uh, definitely save you a ton of time. Yes. Um, the other thing, Kathy, that you brought up, which is actually really interesting is that, um, that that's, you know, that's, that's the reason why Thera, why we developed Therapol initially, which is my first company, which where we make a lot of custom braces for animals with special needs and also why we, um, why we expanded to vital vet and that because I am tired uh, you know and I'm getting on a very serious note and you may hear the violins in the background but I am so tired and my heart breaks 
every time I hear somebody, whether it's a veterinarian, whether it's a rehab therapist or a pet parent say, I wish I would have known. I wish someone had told me. I do I, not ever. I want those, those sentences to be eradicated from, from pet parenthood right. because now I want people to, to, to know of the options that are available. I don't, I don't want, you know, there, there are so many times where you kind of oftentimes because you're the guardian and you're the caregiver to your animal, you blame yourself sometimes mm -hmm. when you don't feel like you found the right products or the right help right. for them. At, and after they've passed away, you kind of have to live with that. And okay. that, I, you know, I've had so many of those dogs where, you know, I wish I'd known, I wish someone had told me, I wish that there were, you, it, it still weighs heavy on me and I don't right. ever want that to happen to anybody else because it's a, it's a, it's, it's a an awful feeling. feeling. It's an awful it's feeling yeah. to live with. Yeah. yeah. So Eladia, uh, what I'm hearing as you say that is your passion. So I think that everything that you have done as a businesswoman has been from a place of passion need a desire to help our furry feathered scaled whatever they may be friends and you know that's just such a wonderful thing that that you brought it to fruition and have allowed all of us pet parents you know practitioners alike to benefit from from that right. passion so thank you right. thank well, you I, you know i think that i i love to help animals but I really actually love to help not only pet parents, but veterinarians and rehab professionals, because if I make their job, they're the ones who are treating my dogs, right? They're the ones who are treating my pets, my horses, my cat, whatever. If I make their lives easier and I provide them with the products that they feel that they need, that is going to improve my pet's health, then by all means, if I can do it, I'd rather, you know, I'd like to provide them with those services, mm -hmm. those resources, those products, because I know my dogs aren't the only ones that need them. Right, right. You know? right. And, and it exponentiates, that. right? It, it, mm -hmm. it like grows because if, if one person learns about it, they tell two people, those two people tell four people, you know, and it right. just grows and grows like rabbits. And, and that's, that's how Therapal <laughs> started. So I had, I had a... Um, I had a greyhound with corns and at that time no one knew what corns were and uh we definitely isolated the pain to the digits and at that time long time ago the solution was to amputate so we amputated one digit then we you know and then he developed a corn on the other digit you know two digits three digits i'm like this dog's running out of toes you know yeah. and the only time he was ever comfortable was on the carpet so i started you know i'm like maybe I should make them some little carpet boots or, you know, some little padded boots because there was nothing like that. And so I, I enlisted the help of the woman who made my dog collars. And I said, can you just use some of the material that you're using and maybe make something that's a little bit more waterproof so that I can stick it on my dog's feet so he has a comfortable cushion wherever he's walking. Right. And that was it. Now, what was interesting about that whole thing is I was done. You know, this wasn't my area of expertise. This wasn't what I wanted to do. I had my own private practice. I'm an occupational therapist working with humans, not animals. And I had a veterinary surgeon show up at my door, my home, not my <laughs> office, my home. Knocking on the door. <laughs> rang the doorbell, scared the dogs, and basically mm. said in a sweet Australian accent, because mm. I'm you know, I'm just a sucker for those. Yeah. <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted me to manufacture those boots, small like a Chihuahua, medium like the Greyhound size that I had, and large like a St. Bernard. And what would it take? And he sat down at my kitchen table and he demanded that I make these. <laughs> well, how, who are you to deny? <laughs> I mean, also kudos to the vet to seeing the huge value in that. Oh, he was, I, yeah, he was, uh, yeah, he was instrumental in getting Therapol off the ground. And that's, that's, that's who did it. That's who prompted me. I mean, with a cattle yes. prod. 
You know, well, here's it, my veterinary surgeon who's coming in, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what did I do? You yeah, know? right. <laughs> and back you know, then, there's not no Google or anything to search where no. I live. I have no idea how it. Oh, you mm. know. <laughs> Duh. You know, I think, and, we, and Kathy and I have talked about this. So many products that have been manufactured for our pets have been out of necessity, right? A labor of love. Like you look at a problem and you're like, how can I resolve that problem? And fortunately over time, over the last 20 years, many of those things that have been um, fabricated at home, you know, taking shopping bags and tape and string and, you know, cobbling something together now somebody has done that professionally and so again back to vital vet now you can go click a button and something that's going to last it's going to be biomechanically uh, more you know appropriate right. um i just want to say one thing here because i talked to you Eladia, about having you back and really yeah. focusing on therapaw yeah. and again you know how you got started all the different types of species that you've created things for and all the the details that you look at when it when it comes to uh, manufacturing your your products and um so i just don't want to lose sight of a vital vet here um did you no but i think i think what's important with vital vet is is to know that that all of the products that are on there and there's over 500 products that are available on vital vet knowing that yeah it's pretty awesome knowing that with, with the products that are available for pets, those are not the end all be all on vital vet, meaning that those products can be modified or changed, or you can find someone to customize them for your animal. So if something's not working quite right, you know, is there a company that can modify those? So for example, on vital vet, you can find dog legs, which are, yeah. which are basically um, like elbow pads for dogs with those hygromas, the big dogs that slam down on their elbows and they get these big water filled pockets on their elbows and they get open wounds sometimes. And, and so you have these dog legs like, you know, elbow pads, but sometimes those aren't even padded enough. So there are companies out there that will take those dog legs and add a whole bunch of sheepskin inside mm. to help make them even more padded. So Vital Vet is an awesome platform because it has over 500 products. But what I really want your audience to know is to realize that those products are basically a springboard to other possibilities that can be done. They're, it's not the end-all be-all. It's so networking. We're networking with, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, you know what? I think this brace would work or I think this ramp would work, but I just need to tweak it a little bit or I wish it had a railing or there are companies out there that will customize or modify things for your specific pet. And um, I think for dogs, especially, that is really, really critical because if you think about dogs, now, dogs have more variability in their shape and size than any other mammal right. in the world. In the world. I mean, that is True. huge. So anything that fits a 60-pound greyhound is never going to fit a 60-pound basset hound. And, and that's, that's really critical not. To, to, to realize. So that the products, you know, a lot of people may get frustrated because they may not be able to find something that fits just quite right for their dog, but that's the reason. The reason is most small, medium, and larges don't really accommodate a lot of the dogs that are mm -hmm. out there because there's so much variability in the dogs. And we're not even talking about the dogs that have um, mobility issues. We're just talking about the able-bodied dogs who, are, who might be healthy. So then when you have a product a lot of the products that have come from VitalVet were, were products that were actually first developed for healthy pets that were then modified to be used for dogs or, or pets with issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that I, um, um, I think is a, a, is a neat point and knowing and for your audience to realize and, and to give manufacturers like Therapol a little bit of leeway in knowing that we are just getting started with the products that are available for pets. 
We really need to uh, buckle down and get more options to you. And we're getting there. You know, yeah. a lot of the companies like Therapal are getting there, but have a little patience and please educate us. Let us know what's working. You know, as a pet parent who may have a dog with a disability or has have trouble getting around and something's not working for you, let us know why it's not working. And maybe there's a company out there that can actually develop some kind of product that would actually mm -hmm. be helpful. Okay, so this is the homepage for Vital Vet. And um, Ooh, ah, I, love I love this video, I do have to say, because I worked really hard on it. And um, but um, it, it's, it's a like a little it's like an avatar world. And it's so cool, and especially if you're just learning about rehabilitation. It's a really fun video to see what is what rehabilitation and physical therapy is all about. They we talk about laser therapy. We talk about wheelchairs. We talk about fitness and therapeutic exercises and so it's a fun little video to i i cannot believe how much information you captured in two minutes and 56 seconds right <laughs> and for for us in the know um it's like you know the movies where you know like the coke can is sitting on the desk as a little you know advertisement mm -hmm. or whatever a lot of major players in animal rehabilitation have little things there, little ads and things, you know, that are, you know, some of the most respected companies um, out there. And so uh, that was not lost on me. I thought it was really nice. amazing. Okay. So I think that I, I, you know, this site can be overwhelming and I want people to go ahead and play on it um, and, and, and play with the different features. But I, what I'd like to focus on today would be the top categories here. Okay. okay. Um, and so, you know, for example, we were talking about at home health and safety. I think this is critical. What, you know, your pet may be at the veterinarians or at the rehab therapist for one hour out of the week and you have him the rest of the time. How are you going to manage him at home? So there's everything from anti-slip and traction aids to help with climbing stairs to in-home protection, calming and anxiety. So my dog has, so, and, and I think that this one's really important. My dog has a neurological issue. He okay. has cerebellar abiotrophy. So it's almost like wow. ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease where his muscles are just wasting. Um, and he's probably gonna be in the world's record for the longest living pet with this <laughs> disorder because they gave us 12 to 18 months for him and it's going on over five years now. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. So one of, and, and he's a wonderful pet to work with because there's so many needs that he has that I have learned so much from him and that's helped me to add more to vital vet. So one of the things that happens with him is he gets very anxious when he's alone. Now he's never alone unless I go to the barn to, you know, handle the horses for about 20 minutes and he might be shaking and really anxious. So I have some anti-anxiety things for him that really help to calm him down. Um, because another feature of his disorder is seizures. And if he gets too anxious, then he may have a seizure. Um, so I really want to keep him calm and I want to keep him less, you know, um, less anxious. And I know that um, uh, anxiety issues are huge with dogs with neuro, um, neurological um, issues. So I think that that's a good thing to keep, uh, put here. And I added this category just for him. Eating and drinking, you know, elevated feeders are really important for dogs with neck issues. Different harnesses and slings for dogs that so my dog has to wear a harness all day long because he can't mobilize by himself. Am I gonna put a really heavy leather, uncomfortable harness on him or a nylon skinny harness that's gonna cut into his armpits? Uh, no, I need something that's really comfortable that he can wear all day long. So these harnesses and slings have been chosen for that specific reason, either to assist an animal that needs help getting from point A to point B, or harnesses that can be worn all day long that are really comfortable that you can grab a dog really quickly if he tries to get up and he needs help. 
Um, um, I think that that's really important. Car safety, because you need to take your pet, you know, out on his daily rides. Like my dog wants to go out on his daily ride. It doesn't matter that he can't walk. He has to sniff. Putting right. them, him in the car. So car safety for him is really important. Wagons and strollers are also really important because I can't, he's 50 pounds and I can walk him for about 20 minutes, but after that I'm done. <laughs> and he is not the type of dog to do well in a cart because his whole body is weak. So he would need something like a quad cart for him. And because he's ataxic and he's moving around quite a bit, so he's really unstable, a cart is not the best option for him. So a wagon or a stroller is definitely a, a much better option for him. And swim and water safety, I think is also important. So all, these top categories are really the ones that I utilize the most, and this is where I go. So if you're looking for a brace or a splint or an orthotic, you have everything here from custom to light supports. If you think your dog needs a more medium or a heavy support, or if you want to break it down into like a custom wrist or ankle support, something for an elbow or shoulder, hip and knee, back and neck. So we break it down. Um, when you go here and you click on any of these, it'll be, bring you to all the different options. Some of these, there's a, sorry, there's a few that are available on the website, but most will lead you to the company's website that carries these products. A lot of these are Amazon because we know and we're big fans of Amazon. We shop on Amazon a lot. And I think that a lot of pet parents do shop on Amazon and Amazon has great deals. So why not have those? Mm -hmm. Also on the left bar here, you'll see if you're not sure what you need, let's take a look at the different conditions. And maybe like, let's say I have a dog with, uh, I don't know. Let's say I have a dog with a cruciate injury. So a knee injury, okay? And I'm looking for a soft brace that is a non-prescription brace because maybe it's, I, I'm hoping that it's really not that critical, but you know, just to give them something until I get to see the veterinarian and the vet has now given me an appointment that's a month out. I don't wanna do without having anything on my dog. So maybe I'll get him a soft knee brace until, until I get to see the vet or the rehab therapist. Um, hey, that's a good idea. Let's get a harness as well because a harness is really gonna help my dog walk when he has a knee injury, you know, and I can help to, to assist him walking around. So even though my dog has a knee injury, he may actually benefit from using a harness or he may actually benefit from using a sling. So it, this gives you some ideas of other things that could also be really helpful, like um, hot and cold packs for the dog's knee in case there's a lot of swelling um, and different types of padding, different um, uh, rehab guides or some guides here. There's some traction uh, aids here because you don't want a dog that has a knee injury to be slipping in the house. Um, and that would actually hurt them even further. So little things that could also help a dog with a knee injury, not beyond the brace. So maybe mm -hmm. a pet step, you know, um, to get up onto the couch because a dog's gonna wanna go on the couch whether he has a knee injury or not. So maybe a step that would help him get on the couch so he doesn't have to jump up and jump down. Maybe the dog uh, loves to go on walks, but you know that the dog is not gonna be able to go for his, an, two mile walk. Maybe you want to get a cart for the dog or, uh, or a, uh, a wagon so that you can take him on his, you know, 15 minute potty break and then put him in a wagon the rest of the time. And then you can pull him around for the next couple of miles, you know, if, if he loves to be outside. So there's a lot of different options beyond just a brace for a dog with a knee injury and a lot of things to think about that would, are really helpful for a dog with a knee injury. By the way, these two harnesses are the ones that I use for my dog and I absolutely love them. The, uh, the prices are just super. And um, this Kudio dog lift has been invaluable for my dog. And 
is a really great all full body support dog. And this easy walker fleece lined harness is the most comfortable harness I have gotten. Um, and he wears his all day, every day. And he, it never comes off until nighttime. And it's got a big, huge D ring. So I can actually grab the D ring almost as a handle to help him get from one bed to another, or if he wants to, you know, go over and sniff another dog, you know, if he decides to get up very quickly and I don't have a chance to put a leash on him. So a lot of these products have been tried by us. A lot of these products we really love. And a lot of these products have been highly recommended to us by either pet parents themselves or rehab professionals such as yourselves. Like Kathy said in the beginning, you know, we, we have solace in knowing that these are tried and true products. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking about this, I was just smiling because, you know, it's not, it's not like, you know, a big executive sitting in a C-suite and doesn't have any idea what the end user needs or wants or is experiencing you're going through that yourself and that is driving a lot of this and you are helping the people on your site to realize what they might need and they don't even know know they need it you know right. so right. yeah it, giving them ideas you know oh yeah. i didn't think about that maybe right. i should get a ramp yeah. Um, the, uh, the other thing that I think is really helpful in Vital Vet is if you go to this education and community, go down to news feed. Okay, so then you click on news feed. And these are a lot of articles. Um, they're, they're absolutely super. And a lot of these blogs we've actually written ourselves. Um, and so if you go scroll down to these Vital Vet publications, you'll see these are... Um, so, some of these, you know, are just uh, fun pieces like the, the boots that we made for the penguins and the ducks. That was really fun. But um, we also do a lot of reviews on different products. Mm -hmm. And I think that these are really helpful. So dog harnesses have been reviewed. And, and not only do we talk about harnesses. So if you look at this article, for example, you'll see that the harnesses that are reviewed are the harnesses that we chose for dogs with mobility issues. It's not for healthy pets that are running around like crazy. It's not the pulling dogs and the no pull harnesses. We're looking for harnesses that are going to be the best to be used for dogs with mobility issues. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what Vital Vet is all about. Um, uh, other things uh, that you'll find some really good educational pieces here. Like, uh, let me pull up another one. That's uh, a good one that I um, wrote. Let me think. Hold on one second. So nerve pain after injury or amputation. I wrote this um, several months ago because I was upset at hearing how many dogs have had nerve injuries and end up self-mutilating. That is, let's say, if they oh, yeah. have a nerve injury on their leg and they end up biting their paw and they end up doing a lot of damage and the veterinarian chooses to go ahead and amputate that, that limb. You know, amputation is permanent. I'd like to see if there's a there's a way for us to salvage that leg and, and have people understand why that dog is biting their paw. Why, what is that dog experiencing? Is it pain? Is it tingling and numbness? Is it some weird sensation that they can't make sense of? And I wrote this article because of it. And not only did I write this article about nerve injuries and how nerves you know, regenerate and the process of regeneration of those nerves. But also I wrote a protocol that pet parents can actually follow on one of the things that people like to do when dogs are chewing at their paws because of a nerve injury is they like to wrap the heck out of it, you know, bandage it so that, so that the dog is protected from themselves. But what ends up happening is the, the paw is actually, or the leg is actually looking for stimulation. It's looking to uh, uh, re, 
like educate themselves on feeling the environment because the nerves have been damaged. So the nerves don't actually feel normal anymore. And they're trying to feel normal and they just are having a hard time doing so. And wrapping the leg is protecting the leg, yes, but it is also prohibiting the nerves from, from feeling the environment. And so I wrote a very simple, it's actually a simple procedure on how to help nerves understand the environment again and be stimulated and with that stimulation, it really helps to reorganize the nervous system and helps the, um, the body to relearn what, uh, what the environment feels like. Um, and hopefully my aim is that with this re-education of the nerves that we can actually save these limbs and prevent amputation. Because again, I'd rather give this protocol a shot for three to six mm. months than amputate a leg and have it be permanent. Because with amputation also comes, you know, the, 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 what we, you know, the side effects of amputation is that compensation and that uh, added pressure on other parts of the body that could in the long run injure the rest of the body. So I'm going to time out here because I have so many yeah. things to say. The dog that you're currently helping me with, you sent me this article and I read it, it from top from to bottom <laughs> and passed it along Super. to his owners. And we both, you know, really appreciated that, learned so much. Um, you know, I'm happy to report that, that Cooper's getting better. And, you know, this was a front limb nerve injury, a brachial plexus injury, and mm -hmm. You know, when they left the, the veterinarian, the neurologist, they said, you know, time will tell if we can save the limb or not. And that limb is going to be saved. So yay, yay, yay. Um, it also makes me think about, Kathy, our interview with Amy Hesbach. Um, Neuroplastic. Disney. On neuroplasticity, because as I was reading this, that's what a lot of what I what resonated with me because we had interviewed her not too long ago and you know i'm really passing that along uh to a lot of our owners so if you haven't uh, listened to that and your dog uh, has had some sort of neurological uh insult um please please listen uh to neuroplasticity with amy hesbach so and what's I, I just just a side note for that chris yes. is that amy hesbach and i are actually working on a neuro kit that pet parents can take home. So she and I are working together. She already has, we already have the protocol down. We're just going to work. We're working on the video. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. that's really exciting. Well, and I know she's one of the, the inst like instructors, you know, that you've utilized over the years and she's doing consults via the vital Vet website. So, you know, she's, she's, uh, also been embedded in this whole movement from the beginning and, yeah. and, uh, kudos to, to both of you. To your point, as far as the neuro stuff goes, what I failed to mention in your introduction is that you have an MS, Master of Science in Neuroscience, and then your MA in Occupational Therapy, which you did mention. So, you know, putting all of this together, you know, you were just, you know, a great uh, resource, you know, for lack of a better word, and then now we're, you know, paying that forward. So you do come from uh, a valid background <laughs> in terms of your didactic education as well, Eladia. Thanks. And well, and I've had, I've had what, 11 dogs. And I, I would say the majority of them have had issues. So I've had everything from corns to dogs with spinal cord injury to, uh, it, this guy with cerebellar abiotrophy to cancer to cruciate injuries. I mean, I've run the gamut. I don't know. You know, what is it when you start learning about something that you attract those animals to mm. you? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid yeah. to learn about anything else because I just don't want the animals. Right. It's like There's a higher yeah. force at work there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you know how rare this disorder is that he has? I was gonna say, I've never <laughs> heard of it. I've not heard of it either. What I'm talking about, you know, when I go to the veterinarians, they're like, "What? We can't help you? Whatever you're doing, just keep doing." You're, there's like nothing that we can do beyond what you're already doing. 
the vet the vet has your name on a list you know it's like right. oh geez here comes a lot of you lock the door <laughs> yep and as a matter of fact what's really funny is that i'm like the bandage expert so anytime my dogs had had surgery they would call me into the or after the surgery was done so that wow. i could bandage my dogs <laughs> Always been, yeah. I'm like the vet rap queen. <laughs> queen, yeah. Um, Eladia, can we go and look at the top here on these um, pet video consultations? I'm interested to hear about that. Sure. So that's something. Uh, you know, we just got started on that. I know. I know <clears throat> they've been live for um, about 18 months now, um, and I'm really, really proud of these uh, teleconsultants. Um, uh, we have been, you know, as Chris mentioned, we've been in the rehab arena for over 20 years. I grew up with these people. I mean, I literally grew up with, with, with the, the, the pioneers in rehabilitation right. and I, Chris included, and you, of course, <laughs> Kathy, I am very honored and humbled and proud to call them my friends. And because of that, they have opened up their doors to me. I, I, you know, it's, I'm glad I can use my power for good instead of evil. Because, <laughs> me too. <laughs> because when I call these people, it's, it's, you know, I say jump and they really say how high. They don't say nice. why, they don't ask. I ask them for, you know, to become our teleconsultants and they all, all jumped on board 100%. So these are the top rehab therapists, literally in the world. I, I didn't get, you know, I, I, I stopped at the number that I have because we are actually working on the teleconsultation app. Hmm. Oh. So that's in development cool. right now. That's really, really exciting. And so I didn't, I, I didn't advertise this portion of the site just yet because I really want the app to get out there. But these are the top rehab therapists in the world. Um, and, uh, and teleconsultation is a little bit different than telemedicine. So these therapists, they do not diagnose and they do not prescribe, but what they can do is they are so well-versed in helping you manage your pet, um, whatever the injury or the, the illness may be to have a better quality of life at home whether it's through some uh, fitness or therapeutic exercises, or even through massage, they'll teach you how to do massage on your animal, on your pet, which is really, really beneficial, especially for animals that are, that are sedentary, that are, that are lying down most of the time. It's um, massage to help move fluid around is really, really useful. We have, we have teleconsultants who are neuro experts, you know, for example, it's really um, scary to have a pet who's had, let's say, a an FCE, a fibrocartilaginous embolism, or what mm -hmm. a lot of people think of as a stroke. And all of a sudden, it's like you've never had a dog with a stroke before. And now, now you have a dog with a stroke, you have no idea where to turn, what to do. Your veterinarian may not be as well versed. You, We have the experts here who can actually talk you through what that may be, who to talk to. Uh, the next steps that you should take and maybe some of the things to consider, you know, down the line, maybe, you, you know, think about getting these types of harnesses or a ramp, or this is what therapy is going to look like. And, and I think that these therapists here on, and we, we have therapists and we have veterinarians can mm -hmm. really help you to navigate really scary, scary uh, right. worlds, a scary yeah. place when your dog gets injured, because all of a sudden, you you're you're saddled with with uh, uh, um, an animal that needs your help and you have no idea what to do. Right. You know, you just don't even know where to turn. And your veterinarian may not be the uh, you know if it's a general practitioner, they may not know the uh, the the um, yeah. most yeah. optimal products or resources or right. steps to take mm. for for that type of injury or insult. Agreed. Yeah. And the price is reasonable. Yeah. $79. That's what I, meant. It, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, I, I said, you know, this is an intro price. And I said 79. And, you know, I, 
I just, just, you know, just for full disclosure, I take $10 off the top and they get the rest. So they don't even get their 79 <laughs> and, and they said, absolutely no problem, you know, and they all jumped on board and they've just been terrific. I mean, Deb Taraka has been, has been in rehab for what, 25 years now. Um, He's you know, the pioneer of yeah. canine rehab. Yeah. At University of Tennessee, I think she's yep. out of. She we an do instructor. Have, right. So on the left bar here, you can say, okay, my dog had was just diagnosed with degenerative myelopathy. And I'll click on it. Who are the best therapists for me to look at who would specialize in this area? My dog is a canine athlete and I really need to bring them back. They've had an injury and I need to bring them back in a way that is going to uh, um uh, reduce the chance of re-injury and uh, promote the best healing process for them being a, a, an athlete. Here are the best people for that. My I didn't even, I'm yeah. sorry, I was going to say, I didn't even realize that um, you were, you funneled this based yes. on diagnosis. Um, right. Right. So again, taking the guessing out of it for, for people. And, you know, some people may be more comfortable with a veterinarian. So we do have that, you know, you can go through your consultants and say, okay, I'd like a vet because I don't really know what's going on. And maybe I need more help with recommendations for maybe some supplements or where to go to or what specialist to see next. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm at the tail end of my rehab and my dog has kind of plateaued. Maybe I'd like to hear what another physical therapist might have to say, you know, and then I might click on the PT or physiotherapist to see what else uh, can be done with my, with my pet. Maybe I'd like to give them some body treatment because they're an older pet and they're achy and they're, you know, arthritic. Um, I have to redo this because there's a few other massage therapists in there. Maybe I'm very into holistic and integrative and nutrition. Maybe I need some help with nutrition and I can take a look at these experts too. Hmm. You know, so there's, um, there's, there's a way to funnel the, through these that would make it more specific to whatever's going on with your pet at the time. And I know you said early on that, that these experts can't diagnose, um, that has to do with practice acts that has to do with, um, you know, being remote, if you will. And, and what about the timing of this? I mean, you launched this when we were going into the pandemic and, you know, vet, vet offices, vet clinics, hospitals were closed or the clients couldn't go in sure. when the pets could. And some still are, are like that. So again, just a great at-home resource. But the other thing that I wanted to mention is you said they also can't prescribe. But what I'm hearing you say, because to me, um, you know, we are prescribing specific therapeutic exercises mm -hmm. or we're prescribing massage. I think what you mean is like prescription medications and things like that. Is that what you were alluding to? Yes. Um, they, uh, of course, medications are off the table, but what they can do and, and, you know, um, therapeutic exercises to some extent, uh, because they haven't been able to see the pet are a little bit, um, you know, these, these therapists and veterinarians are well-versed in what they can and can't you know, prescribe, but therapeutic exercises are prescription. So what they will say is, okay, uh, and, and they're very thorough. A lot of them will require you to do some video of your pet. Mm -hmm. A lot of them will require you to submit your medical records. A lot of them will want your contact information from your veterinarian so that they can liaison with your vet. Um, and so, and they wanna know what's been done beforehand. Um, and as let's say that you're nowhere, let's say that you're in the middle of the country and you're nowhere near a physical therapist's right. office and you may want to get a physical therapy consult. So in that case, they might say, okay, I want to, I want to see what a physical therapist has to say about my dog, because I want to get them back to their, you know, they're a hunting dog and I really, you know, and it's an athlete. So I want to get them back to you know, their full capabilities, what would, would a physical therapist say um, uh, to help me with my dog? And no, I haven't seen a PT before. Uh, that physical therapist might say, okay, this dog, okay, your dog has suffered this type of injury based on your medical records. I see how your dog is functioning. 
most often and in general, dogs with this type of injury that are functioning at this level may do well with these types of exercises. But mm. please consult your veterinarian before you go ahead and yep. embark in this. In this. Um, and then they may actually write a whole uh, you know, list of therapeutic exercise and then they may actually submit it to the veterinarian for their approval mm. before the before it is uh, deemed okay and and feasible for the pet. Hmm. Excellent. Can you um, talk a little bit about the um, the online courses? Is those for are those for clients as well as um, rehab professionals? Yeah. So these online courses are are uh, we have a lot a yeah, lot of canine athletes in yeah. our. Um, we have about actually today we have. 8,501 subscribers, because <laughs> I just checked right before we got on this call. Um, well, after, I'm going to subscribe after, so then you'll have it. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of these are true. <laughs> a, lot of our, a lot of our subscribers are trainers and handlers, yep. and a lot of the subscribers are, are, mm -hmm. are, are pet parents of, of agility dogs and mm -hmm canine athletes. So we included these training, uh, these, um, these courses that mm -hmm. are, again, you know, our instructors, Ria Shiani, she's one of the, she is one of the top physical therapists in, in the country, in the world, actually. And she was um, the physical therapist for the U.S. agility team and traveled with them all over the world. Um, we have a lot, Yana Gams, she's just incredible. Um, She's a, she's a veterinarian and she's a, a, also a certified canine rehab practitioner. And she has some wonderful classes. Bobby Lyons has some wonderful classes. So not only are these for like agility and training and strengthening, but you also have some really interesting courses like kinesiology taping. If you're interested in learning about that now, if I'm a general practitioner or a, a, a physical therapist who maybe just graduated from the University of Tennessee or from the Canine Rehab Institute, I may want to learn more about kinesiology taping. So I may want to take this course. So it's not just for pet parents. It's also for uh, general practitioners, yes. for uh, rehab professionals who may want to advance their training as well. I took this at the STAR conference. Oh, you did? I, I did. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so it was great. You know, it was like great. Modalities, you know, that's probably more, that's a certification course for, for rehab therapists and for mm -hmm. veterinarians. So that's something that pet parents would probably not be able to take. Gotcha. Um, but most of these other ones are, you know, general and foundational fitness. All of these are are great courses for, for any dog owner who mm -hmm. would want their dog to be physically fit. No. Right. And we just, we just interviewed somebody who's an enrichment expert and that mm -hmm. goes hand in hand too, right? right. You know, training, yeah. you know, the, the exercises, it's also very enriching and, and increases the bond with your pet. Um, one thing that I wanted to, to ask you about too, at the top, you have rehab centers. You mentioned earlier, you know, maybe you're in a remote area, rural area, right. um, you know, right. you don't have a rehab center close by, um, or at least you don't know of one, but maybe you do. So is this a comprehensive list of all the rehab centers or is it, uh, are these people that have responded to your, um, request uh to be on vital vet how does that go so so these this is a compilation of of rehab centers that i know about that that i've been working with and this is also in response to any you know uh rehab centers are are growing in leaps and bounds so we have what over on vital vet we have over 500 rehab facilities yeah. Um, worldwide, but I think that there's close to, if not more than re, uh, 500 rehab facilities in the United States alone. Mm -hmm. So we, we add them on, um, all the time. And there's a place up here on the top where it says, add my practice, add practice, and you can click on it. There's no charge and we'll add your practice. And it's nice because you have Let's say, you know, you want to look for a place that's, I mean, you can, you can type in your area as well, but I just like to play with the map because it's fun. 
Ooh. And you, <laughs> let's say I'm in Nashville. I have three in in uh, the Nashville area, and I can take a look at them, and I can see how they're rated on Google. I can see what their um, what their area of expertise is, what they offer. So here you know, the Animal Re Rehab of Tennessee offers physical rehabilitation. It also offers laser pain management, holistic and braces and wheelchairs. So if my dog needs a fitting for a wheelchair, I may want to click on this one and see. And once you click on it, you can actually have a lot more information about it and what they offer. Ooh, this one offers hydrotherapy. So I may want to put my dog in an underwater treadmill or that's what was recommended. And sure enough, there it is. This facility actually offers an underwater or hydrotherapy. It all also offers acupuncture and chiropractic and Chinese medicine. You know, I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of acupuncture. I I'm a huge, you know, a uh, fan of holistic, uh, you know, treatment for animals. I think that's the, that, that just makes sense to me. They, they deal with, you know, the, the animals are treated, their dogs and cats. You'll, you know, if you have a, a, a um, an exotic pet, you may want to find some, you know, a place that has, that, that treats exotic pets. And then go you go see Kathy. You see yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And then you can Birds. go right from here, right to their website or to their Facebook page or to the reviews. Um, <laughs> Eladia, have you ever considered um, yeah. branching out from animals that have mobility impairments to pets that have uh, sensory impairments? Um, I have a lot of uh, experience in, in dealing with animals that have uh, uh, blindness or visual impairments. And um, they seek me out and I'm part of the blind dog community. I mean, something like this would be fantastic for dogs that had sensory impairments because blind dog people don't have a lot of resources and dogs that are deaf don't have a lot of great resources either. Um, and it's just something that, you know, makes me think, boy, the blind dog community would eat this up Your if they had adventure. access to, if yeah. they had access to information about what was great for products and what was great for you know, nutrition and what was, and, and about diseases like glaucoma or. Or, you know, and a lot of know, it cataracts, is cataracts, things like that. So, yeah. And I was by retinal degeneration syndrome, things like that. Yeah, a lot you, of it I, is I love that. overlapping because yes, absolutely will talk about, you know, like if, if, you know, a dog can't see and, you know, they need to make sure that they have good footing because you don't yeah. want them stepping off the carpet gate. and onto right. the slippery floor. And, you know, so there's a lot of overlap mm -hmm. between, um, Kind of the physical, as you said, Kathy, rehabilitation and sensory rehabilitation, if you will, yeah. or, or management. You brought, up a, you brought up a really good point, Kathy. You know, we, I have, I'm, I'm so grateful when I, you know, it, it's almost like because I'm in this 24 seven, sometimes I overlook some things that could be, you know, that are obvious mm -hmm. to others. And I love it when, good. when, when you bring up a, a duh moment, a duh. Like I should include, you know, absolutely just, products just, and services for dogs that are blind. Why exactly, not? Exactly. Exactly. Like, and they, why they, didn't they, I do that? <laughs> you heard it here first. I still have time. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Why did uh, I not do that? That's they, ridiculous. There's not a lot of great resources for people who have dogs with visual impairments or, or blind. You're so right. um, something like this would be fantastic for them. I couldn't agree with you more. I'm getting on it. I'm going to get on it. It'll be done by the week. Well, <laughs> all right. Next weekend. Next I'll, weekend. I'll send you my wow. book on living with blind dogs. I'll send you my book on living with blind That's, dogs. <laughs> oh, I love it. Are you kidding? We'll put it on. So I'll send it to you. It was, it was a really cool product that I found for dogs that were blind. And it was like a padded helmet. There's and a lot of good stuff out there. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there. They're I even doing echo. One place. They're even doing like echolocation. They're doing hoops, halos. Yeah, uh, I, I have the like halos that. and I have the, the, the mm -hmm. uh, padded, I, I do have the halos. Helmets, yep. Yeah, can you send all that to me? I would got it. To help, uh, you uh, got it. Build that, <laughs> that section. You're going to find it on Shop All. It's going to be, you know, what should we call it? Uh, visual Im visually impaired pets, visual impairment, blind dogs. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it because they may not be completely blind, they just may be exactly. impaired. So, yes, they might that would capture. It. Love it. Let's yeah. add it. We're in, we're in. You and I are in. Everything you've got, I'm gonna load it all up. 
Okay. So, uh, all right, I want books, I want products, I want, this is how, this is how VitalVet gets built. Right. VitalVet is a community mm. built site. It really yeah. is. What do you need help with? What are the resources? You you know, Kathy, you probably have accumulated all these resources from your years of experience with them. Right. Now let's put them all under one umbrella. Let's do nice. it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Eladia, how, yeah. um, like, do you have uh links to podcasts and things such as ours such as petability no, but that's another great idea <laughs> i have video you will now <laughs> i have i love that idea gosh that's genius so i have a video library yeah. which i have to go through because it's a little it's a little unwieldy right now but i just absolutely um cherish it because mm -hmm. video you know video is the what people really resonate with at these you know, at this time. So you can find like, if you have a dog, you, if you have back injury, you can find all the different types of videos for dogs with back injuries or equine rehab or arthritis or neuro issues. Um, and then you can look at all these videos. And a lot of them are from veterinary clinics that help you to either understand the issue or to um, different types of things that you can do at home to help your pet passive range of motion exercises, you know, different therapeutic types of exercises. Tom, you, like you want a timeout, Chris? T Chris wants a timeout. This is, this is an official timeout, like not a break. This is just okay. like, like as we're talking. So Eladia. Yes. We do have over, what do we have about 60 shows now on all different yeah. things about enhancing okay. pets lives. Yeah. But uh, we also then started our YouTube channel and we also have passive range of motion, stretching, therapeutic exercises. Um, so we have a whole uh, YouTube channel too that, that we can partner with you um, yeah. and get, just get more, more stuff out there. You know what's really fun? Hmm. I own this website. So, <laughs> so you can do what you want. <laughs> what you want. So for example, do what I want. So I can go and add you in a giant banner up here that would nice. like push all of this down. Giant banner with <laughs> your podcast, your videos scrolling through the top here. Wonderful. Wow. So we're looking for our big break. We, yeah, we think this we're is very it. entertaining. This is, this and is we it. Think, this is it. Yeah. I, we have I a lot of really. Are you kidding? I, I would love it. I would love to add this content. Perfect. So that, you know, maybe, maybe because the app's not done yet. Maybe I can put, I can change this to podcasts and put all of your different podcasts here. You see these blocks yeah. here? Yeah. 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 And put them all here. And so, you know, I just need like an image of something and you can send me the text and I'll upload them all here or all your videos here. Thank you. You know, whatever you want. Absolutely. And again, there's a lot of cross connections because we've interviewed Amy Hesbach. We've interviewed uh, Julie Busby with toe grips. We've yeah. interviewed, you know, so it all in, and, and, and love it. people have different, um, ways of learning. Right. And yeah. some people are like, you know, I want to listen to the podcast during my commute and, you know, I'm very <laughs> auditory and that's great. I can process other people need to see it. Other people need to feel it. So, yeah. you know, I think the more that we can introduce, uh, mm -hmm. you know, different formats and types of content, I think that's Are you so Eladia, you've mentioned, you know, so many great, uh, rehab products and, and different products that are out there. And, um, one thing that I saw is you have life vests and such, but you don't have the heads up pets, water collar. And Kathy and I recently connected with uh, the, the ladies there in Texas that are the brain children behind this wonderful product that saves dogs from drowning. What about getting that on your site? I love it. What, do you, what, what is it? What is it? I've never heard of such a thing. Well, I learned from you that there is such a thing as closed cell foam. And uh, it actually is closed cell foam in, in a water in a collar super lightweight they have what is it kathy 11 sizes for 11 or 12 Chihuahua. sizes yeah, wow. yeah. to dogs over yeah. 200 wow. pounds wow and the difference between this water collar and a life vest is that if the dog is exhausted and passes out if they're struck by a jet ski and knocked out it keeps their head, nose, ears out of the water so they don't drown. So that's their tagline is, you know, save dogs from drowning. I love it. Right? I absolutely love it. And, and if, I, uh, I'm sorry, Aladia, if 
if people are interested, I mean, this is a really unique product. Um, and this is going to save dogs from, this is truly going to save dogs from drowning. So if your dog is near the water, this is probably one of the most important products you will purchase for your pet. Um, and the, they are offering a discount if you go to their website and use the promo code PETPOD22, P-E-T-P-O-D-22, capital letters, you'll get 10% discount. Exciting. Please, please send it my way. This is how we add products to Vital Vet. And if I don't have it, I need it. I want it. Let's you got to have it. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. So, Eladia, this has been so great to learn all of this vast information, plethora of resources that is contained in the platform that is Vital Vet. Yeah. Do you have one last thought, a closing remark that you would like to leave our audience with? Uh, I would like to ask for their help. Um, Vital Vet is a community built site. Join our community. Vital Vet could not have been built without the help of everybody in the community. So when you talked about Kathy, when you said, why aren't there products for dogs that are blind? Brilliant, genius. That's what we need to hear. We want to add all of those products. We want to add all of those ideas on here. The community is the one that has built this site and we need all of their help. So if you have a dog or a cat or a pet with a condition that where you're not able to find resources, even on Vital Vet, let us know, let us do the research. And then guaranteed, whatever's going on with your dog or your cat or your pet, you're not the only one. And if we can find products, resources that are going to help you, that means that we're going to find products and resources that are going to help others just like you. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And can you let people, our audience know, um, where can they find you? Where can they find me? Where can um, they find you? <laughs> where can they find you? The, the website, the, no, I'm kidding. the yeah. website is vitalvet.org. Yep, dot .org. It's not vitalvet.com. That's a facility out in Australia, I think. So it's okay. vitalvet.org. Um, and you can email there. Or if you want to go to therapod.com, you can email there. I get most of the emails and I will rifle through them. If you need to contact me specifically, um, you can, uh, email the easiest place would be to email me at Therapal. So it's Eladia at Therapal.com. And my name is I L A R I A at Therapal singular.com. And there is a contact button right at the top of vital vet. So I know that, uh, that's, that's easy. You know, people can get in touch and Kathy, I know you need to go, but there's, there's two things I want to say real quick. I, I, I want to share two fun facts that I know. One, Ilaria is a princess, legit, in Italy, from Italy. Her family is very famous, and that's so cool. The second fun fact is her brother, Lorenzo, was on The Bachelor. He was a bachelor, so he was the star that the women all fawned over, and I am a bachelor junkie. I hate to, to admit that. It's my uh, guilty pleasure, and uh, so that was, was several years ago, right, Eladia, that he was? Yeah, yeah, he was the bachelor Rome. Rome. And uh, yes, and they called him Prince Lorenzo, and um, what's also cool is he also has a love for animals and has done things in the animal space, right? The pet space? Yeah. So he, he co-founded Animal Aid USA, which is a huge rescue that goes down to Georgia and uh, rescues all of the uh, dogs that are in kill shelters and brings them up north, which is how I got saddled with this, you know, rescue dog. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put that in our show notes, Chris, too, so people can go there as well. So okay. we'll put Therapal yeah, and Vital Vet and, yes. and the brothers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm going to stop <laughs> recording. Thank you, Eladia. So let's, yeah. I'll go ahead and thank her again so we can do this. Thank right. you. Thank you so much, Eladia. This was, this was fantastic. Um, I'm really excited and I'm going to recommend this for all our veterinarian friends, rehab friends and, and clients. Well, thank Ditto. You so much. Thanks really much. We'll talk soon. Okay. Bye.